Hey, I'm Callum, also known as Northern Dice, and I'm going to be giving you a video review of Muffin Time, a take that game for two to six players. So Muffin Time is a card game where basically anything can happen and probably will happen, as it says on the tin. It's by Big Potato Games and the YouTuber known as Tomska. I believe he's done all the artwork and it's heavily inspired by his YouTube series, the ASDF Movies, which I have watched and are fantastic. Do check them out. Anyway, the objective of the game is to collect 10 cards and say Muffin Time and then surround, survive another round. You cannot have more than 10 cards after that. And if you have less than, then it's, it's irrelevant. You have sort of lost the opportunity. And there are three types of cards in the game. You have got action cards, which come in a blue flavor, trap cards, which come in a red flavor, and response cards, as they were, which come in a green flavor, which of course are actually known as counter cards. Now what happens is on your turn, you can lay a trap, then you may play a card or you may take a card. Now, because the objective of the game is to have 10 cards, you won't be wanting to spend traps and other cards willy-nilly. All of them have specific purposes. In example, you were to lay a trap, it would go down in front of you, you can only have three traps at any one time, and it would activate when someone triggers it. You would constantly need to refer to it, because you ain't going to remember these. So, lol out loud, if another player says muffin time, they discard three cards. You just instantly activate that the moment someone says the words muffin time. And that is going to happen because as soon as someone gets 10 cards, they have to say Muffin Time. And nice to me, if another player forces you to gain cards through drawing or stealing, they may draw that many as well. Which is another interesting one because you're making other people gain cards. They only want 10. If they have more than 10, they are not going to be in a good position. So they're not going to be wanting to play them. You have action cards that you will probably play next if you weren't going to pick up. And these have very specific effects, generally against very specific people. In the two examples I've picked up here, you have, oh no, babies! All players who have never played this game before draw three cards. Really, really specific. Not as specific as, nice hat. All players wearing a hat discard three cards. Now in some situations, those won't be relevant. But that doesn't mean they're pointless, because they still add up to those ten cards that you need. And finally, we have your counter cards. My favourites double the effect of the action card played against you. So if someone plays a card against you, you can respond with this counter and it will double the effect, which seems like a very daft thing to do unless they are getting you to pick up cards and you are low on them. Or cards specifically against other cards, like the Bomb Squad. Stop the card, mine turtle, and draw three cards for yourself. And here is the Mind Turtle, in a very, very nice, shiny form. All players discard three cards each. You play that against it, you wouldn't, you'd pick up three cards instead. Now, in my incredible excitement for this game, I got the Kickstarter version, which came with a thousand different extra cards for the expansions. So if you are going for the vanilla version, you may not receive all of these cards. But all the cards have all got the same level of purpose. You still have your counters, you still have your traps, and you still have your actions. You also, I don't know if these are Kickstarter expansions exclusive, I believe they're core game, have your own blank ones which you can use to replace, or you can use to create your own cards. Stop the current action and skip ahead to your turn. Deflect an action against uh, an action or trap played against you onto other players after you. If another player asks you how many cards you have, they discard three cards. It's all very specific. When you play the game, you will find yourself, at the start, being unable to resist constantly repeating the phrases and different things said in the ASD movies. Me and my friend immediately started singing Desmond the Moonbear, which triggered someone's trap card, which was really infuriating. Because then after that, everybody was on tender hooks on an edge, which made someone else activate a different trap card. It's a big spiralling circle of making sure the take that is just right for your group. And surprisingly, we found that it was for us. 
The game doesn't sit on the table too long. It is a case of you will play the cards, someone will eventually get up to nine, everyone will panic and start attacking them, and someone will slip through the net and get 10 cards. The card quality and the stock itself is fantastic. I've not actually felt cards from a Kickstarter of this quality before, to knowledge. The actual game presentation is wonderful. It is just this box where everything fits inside. The rules are incredibly concise as well. They are just one A4 sheet folded up and it is just a very quick explanation with an FAQ at the end and also a QR code to explain what the ASDF movies are, which is great for context, especially if you're playing with people who may not have seen it before. So we love Take That Games. It is the sort of mechanic that we can just really get our teeth into and Muffin Time really delivered in that area. It wasn't hard to get your head around. We picked up the rules, read them aloud, and instantly everyone knew how to play it. And it's not because we were just so on it. It's because the rules are really, really simple, concise instructions that you just need to follow. And when you're playing the game as well, the cards do exactly what they say on the tin. You read a card, it says anyone wearing a hat discards three cards. That's what happens when you play that card. If a counter card says do it again, it happens again. There's not much area that's grey when you're playing the cards. A couple of the cards did require people to all join in with something and contextually there were advantages and disadvantages based on maybe where people were sitting or who they were next to but it wasn't something that we thought was detrimental to play and it didn't hinder gameplay either. It was one of those you pick up the card you play it everybody does it there's no time for sulking there's no time for celebrations because by that point someone else has already played a card or activated the trap card and gameplay has moved on three steps. The pace is so fantastically set that you aren't ever going to be having that person sitting there contemplating which card to play. It's a fast, fun game. That's great for a quick laugh. So as you can probably guess, did we enjoy it? Yes, we did. It was one of those games that we did pick up, play, play again, and play again. There wasn't really much time in the evening for much else. But that's not the purpose of the game. It is a filler. We played it so much just because we were on that high of playing it. Next time it comes out, it will be a guarantee that it will come out once, we'll play it for that evening, and that will be that. We'll move on to something bigger, because that's how filler games are supposed to work, which is great. With the theme, though, some of us really enjoyed the theme, and as I've said, got caught out by it a couple of times as well from referring to it and referencing it. Some of us had no idea what ASDF was, which is fine, and worked in their favour in some aspects, but it did mean that some of the cards they were looking at and sort of pulling different faces, trying to contemplate what it meant, why it was there. In the example, why is there a bear called Desmond who lives on the moon? It didn't really need that background, but I think it could have been appreciated a bit more by the people who had seen it or did know what ASDF was. As far as gameplay goes, because it is Take That, it is a bit frustrating, like with all Take That games, when you are the target. If you are the person that everybody is targeting because you are on eight cards, you will be dropped down to two in no time. And it's that moment where the game is at its lowest. But that doesn't last long. As I've said, because of the pace of the game, everybody takes their turn so quickly that you're able to pick up a card. And before you know it, you've gone from two cards to five to eight. And inevitably, at that point, probably someone's won because the game is never on the table longer than it needs to be. But you never feel like victory has been snatched away from you in favour of someone else. If you are about to win, people will do everything in their power to stop you, and that will be that. Chances are, though, them stopping you is going to hinder them as well, because it's that 10 card count, generally, that they need. There are some cards that do change the win conditions, but that's not one of those sort of cheaty elements of the game. Whenever someone gets one of those cards, it does clearly say the condition, and there are things the other players can do to stop it. You're always given a time frame, and you never quite feel cheated. It can be frustrating, but it's still a rewarding game. So Muffin Time is an incredibly family-friendly game. So I'd argue that it is for families, but because of the content on some of the cards, it possibly might not be right for those of a much younger generation or of a much older generation. Because there are so many niche pop culture references specifically to the ASDF movies, you are going to be sat there either getting it or not getting it. And with that, if you don't get it and you have an older generation, that might be just uh, blow it off, it's fine. But if you are of the younger generation, some of the cards can be quite confusing. There's a lot of reference to 
death and killing in that, as hard as it is to say, light-hearted, funny internet video sense, but it is still something that would I would personally say is inappropriate for children and maybe some younger teenagers. Gameplay-wise, I would argue that it is for any group, and that's a Big claim, because I know that I've got a few friends who are heavy, heavy Euro gamers, but I think they'd appreciate this just as that pure filler. It's entirely take that. There's nothing in the game that is going to upset them necessarily. It is so quickly done with that they won't remember it if they didn't enjoy it. And if they did enjoy it, it'll be that filler they'll want to go back to. Saying that, because it is purely take that, it is one of those games that people aren't going to get on with if they don't like take that whatsoever. They are going to get caught out, they are going to get upset, and they will be targeted. And some people can't handle that. And that's fair. But if you are one of those people, this probably isn't the game for you. But would we recommend it? Yeah, that's how we would. It's a game that I can see many of my friends, many of my family picking up and playing with me. Possibly even buying it themselves based on the gameplay. Based on the theme, I can't see many of them, if they don't already know about ASTF, going off and running off. And doing the research, watching the videos. If they do, fantastic. They'll appreciate the game all the more. If not, the theme is just the theme. It'll seem silly, and that's because it is. It's a game where anything can happen and anything does happen. The quality of the cards is superb. As I've said, the stock used for these cards is brilliant. I wouldn't argue that they are indestructible. But I would say that there's so much quality in there that you shouldn't be overly panicked about people spilling drinks or bending cards. It's a game that's take that cards are meant to be slammed down, played, dropped in a bit of a temper. It's not one of those games that you're meant to be delicate with. There isn't space in the box to sleeve them, if anybody asks. And again, it isn't one that I'd argue is good for those of the older generation who may not get the niche references and probably not for the much younger. But if you fall into the latter between, if you are someone who needs a new filler game, if you are someone who does enjoy the ASDF movies, or if you just want a decent take that game, I'd argue this is a fantastic choice. It is niche in some areas, but if you can get over that, it is brilliant in terms of gameplay, fantastically quick, excellently paced, and really worth your time.